So uh, our, our, our next speaker, I think, uh, is well known to the audience. Uh, and I, I just have to say, on top of the many, many honors that uh, Jane has achieved, uh, uh, in the last weeks, uh, she was inducted to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences with Michelle Obama. So anyways. Uh, uh, so um, I am very entranced with the issues of memory and forgetting, uh, not least because I have never had much of a memory. I won't notice as it gets worse because it was always so bad. Um, and so I, uh, uh, when, when the opportunity presented itself, I decided to put this evening together uh, just because I think the stuff is fascinating. Um, I myself am not someone with a, you know, as profoundly close a connection to this subject matter as everybody else you're going to hear, but since I put it together, I had to be part of it. Um, so I, I just want to thank everybody for humoring me and, and, and uh, all coming together, Lidquake, UCSF, presenters, two from the East Coast, uh, so that I could get to be scribbling notes frantically from uh, Amy's talk already and, and coming up with some new ideas. Um, and I'd also like, simply because it is an evening about memory as well as forgetting to um, uh, adopt tonight the Australian custom of memory where they acknowledge the elders, the specific elders of any piece of land that an event takes place on. And so elders past, present, and future, and especially the Ohlone peoples of, of this ground. Um, so I have... I have a few thoughts, and then I'll read you a few poems. Um, so, so poetry began, uh, one has to speculate, because memory does not go back far enough to recreate it. But my speculation, poetry began as a technology of expression, as a technology of transformation, and also, most people agree, as a technology of memory. Um, before the invention of writing, uh, the rhyme and meter patterns of poetry were how you held language exactly in place. And the, um, uh, the aphorisms of ancient Sumeria are not different from a stitch in time saves nine or 30 days hath September, which is, I think, for most of us in this room, the one time we actually use oral memory in the way it used to be used. And one thing which proves the stabilizing quality of sound and memory so strongly is that when I say that, I'm using the word hath. You know, not 30 days has September, but 30 days hath September. And that's what rhyme and meter do. And listening to Amy, I was wondering if the repetitive patterns of poetry are long-term potentiation creating in, in, in how they work. Um, but uh, most people, I think, also know now that you know the Homeric poems were not only beautiful and memorable stories, but they were also the encyclopedias of that pre-literate world where they told you how to be a guest, how to be a host, how to launch a ship, how to get from here to there. Um, but you know, works of art also require forgetting, new works of art, because any discovery, any new perception, any new thing seen or said means detaching yourself from what was in your mind before, from your fixed ideas, from last moment rather than this moment. There is a, necess a necessity for change to happen by a loosening of the grip of memory. It's just part of it. And uh, those of you in the room who have read Thomas Kuhn's paradigm, uh, you know, scientific change paradigms, it's, it says basically the old memories have to die off before the new paradigm is going to be uh, completely taken in and accepted. Um, so memory's other side, which is the phrase that I've been using to say forgetting as I was thinking about this evening, is things like suppleness, 
malleability, elasticity of being, and the basic and fundamental capacity for change. These all are linked to forgetting. And it is also linked to the Buddhist idea of non-attachment, of letting go of things, not having such a strong grip on whatever was. Um, I think in the psyche it is a kind of humility that we cannot hold on to everything in fixed ways. And for some reason these days I've become very big on humility as one of the needed virtues. Um, and, and so, you know, forgetting is simply an inextricable part of both Heraclitian change and quantum change. The very molecules must forget what they were in order to become something new. Anyhow, I'm sure that Lewis Hyde is going to be talking more about this in, in his section of the evening. And so I'm going to bring into the palette of the evening's conversation a few poems that simply mention memory and forgetting in different ways. And because poetry is one of the ways that things are made memorable. I'm going to start by giving you a sample of uh, the work of two women poets from 1,000 and 1,200 years ago, poems which have been remembered because they hold something human and useful and beautiful and transformative. Um, so uh, Heian-era Japan, uh, the court culture of what is now Kyoto, only golden age in world literature created by women writers. And these are just a few poems by the two women who I co-translated. I didn't realize I was going to do this when they asked us what books to get in. Uh, these are all in the Ink Dark Moon. It's not outside, uh, but it is very much in print, and, and you, can, you can have a store order it in or, or procure it from your library. Um, so this is Ono no Komachi, 8th century poet. Those gifts you left have become my enemies. Without them, there might have been a moment's forgetting. The poems are 31 syllables in the Japanese, so they're all very short. This pine tree by the rock must have its memories too. After a thousand years, see how the branches lean toward the ground. I thought to pick the flower of forgetting for myself, but I found it already growing in his heart. <laughs> and these are uh, Izumi Shikibu, 11th century. Uh, you can think of her as kind of the Emily Dickinson of Japanese literature. Which shouldn't exist in this world? The one who forgets or the one who is forgotten? Why haven't I thought of it before? This body, remembering yours, is the keepsake you left. If you had stayed away when first I missed you, I might have forgotten by now. <laughs> uh, so Shikibu uh, had a daughter who grew up to become a poet of beginning note herself, and then the daughter Naishi died in childbirth. Um, and it helps for envisioning this poem to uh, know that they practiced cremation. Uh, it has a little head note. After the time Naishi died, snow fell, then melted away. Why did you vanish into empty sky? Even the fragile snow, when it falls, falls in this world. So these poems seem to be rooted in memory, but they are also doing the work of transformation and being able to move into the future. Um, when Shikibu's great love, Prince Atsumishi, died, she wrote 249 poems of mourning. They are absolutely gorgeous. We have them all. Um, but then she lived long enough that she went on and wrote other things. And it is exactly that capacity to move into and towards loss 
and memory that when it is thoroughly enacted then allows the person to continue to have new changed uh, conditions of being and life. Um, so I'm going to give you a, a very few poems of my own. Um, I had picked out an assortment. I wasn't sure what I would do and what I wouldn't do. Um, but I have to, since Aplesia was mentioned, this is not one of my better poems, but it, you know, it's an okay poem, I put it in a book. Um, and it has Aplesia in it. And now I have been fact-checked, so I'm afraid there's an error. I thought that there were 20,000 neurons, and now I've learned there's only 10. Um, so you're not sure? We, we will both fact-check it later. Um, so, so, so this poem describes pretty much what was happening, which was, it was a cold place, I was working, it was morning, I took my coffee back to bed, I was getting ready to write, I had an idea, I was very excited, I put the coffee cup down, it caught on the edge of the table, and whammo. Um, so, my task. An idea appears, it catches against the edge of the bedside table. Coffee on the wall. Coffee on the marble tabletop, coffee on the sheets. The idea has flown everywhere with it. A plesia, marine snail of memory, someone may someday find in your 20,000 neurons this thought I have lost. <laughs> My task is to find your less studied sister, the erasing and soapy sea sponge. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> I, she said she loves that. Um, uh, this is a very lightweight, again, little, little poem, but I had to bring it tonight because its title is My Memory. Like the soaps and shampoos a traveler brings home, then won't use. You, memory, almost weightless this morning inside me. And I will, let's see, oh, I think I have, to, well, I have three more possibilities and probably time for two. Um, okay. Um, a bucket forgets its water. A bucket forgets its water, its milk, its paint. Washed out, reused, it can be washed again. I admire the amnesia of buckets, how they are forthright and infinite inside it, simple of purpose, how their single seam is as thin as the rib of a donkey's. A bucket upside down is almost as useful as upright. Step stool, tool shelf, drum stand, small table for lunch. A bucket receives and returns all it is given, holds no grudges, fears, or regret. A bucket striking the mop, sing, ring, the mop sink rings clearest when empty, but not one can bray. So you see, now this is, a, this is something in praise of forgetting, no grudges. You don't remember to be resentful or afraid or, or even regret, so. Um, uh, but I do think the Japanese poets know best um, when they uh, go into the memory before trying to avoid it because we all know what happens if you simply try not to look. It doesn't work. Okay, so, so one more, and I almost wore uh, the very item that this poem suggests. It's just a poem that mentions forgetting along its way. But you've all seen those travel vests with all the pockets in them. And I love mine. It means when I fly now, I don't carry a purse. I just put everything in the pockets. Okay, uh, so last poem, vest. I put on again the vest of many pockets. It is easy to forget which holds the reading glasses, which the small pen, which the house keys, the compass and whistle, the passport. To forget at last for weeks, even the pocket holding the day of digging a place for my sister's ashes, the one holding the day where someone will soon enough put my own. To misplace the pocket of touching the walls at Auschwitz would seem impossible 
it is not. To misplace for a decade the pocket of tears. I rummage and rummage, transfers for Munich, for Melbourne, to Oslo, a recipe for a, sing a receipt for a Singapore copy, a device holding music, Bach, Garcia, Richter, Porter, Pert. A woman long dead now gave me, when I told her I could not sing, a kazoo, now in a pocket. Somewhere a pocket holding a Steinway. Somewhere a pocket holding a packet of salt. Borgesian vest, Oxford English Dictionary vest with a magnifying glass tucked inside one snap-closed pocket. Wikipedia vest, Rosetta vest, Enigma vest of decoding. How is it one person can carry your weight for a lifetime? One person slip into your open arms for a lifetime? Who was given the world and hunted for tissues for chapstick? Thank you.